hopefully worthwhile. Uh, just one question to start with. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Okay, you can. Perfect. Excellent. So we can absolutely start. So guys, uh, just one protocol we would like to follow that of course, because this is not a live session, so we won't be able to have a lot of interaction, but one way is there to interact and that is through chat. Okay. So I'm not going to say you ask a lot of questions there right now, a lot of remarks, but please, whenever I ask a question, I'll try to make it a binary question so that you can answer in a yes or a no. Okay. That way, two things will happen constant interaction will happen. And the second thing is because most of you don't have your videos on, everybody will know whether you are there or not, or rather whether you would have just gone away. So both things are going to be taken care for. So can we have a check? Are you guys absolutely fine with this form of interaction? Can I have some whys on the chat screen? Excellent. So yes, a lot of people are writing yes. And I hope everybody is there. So if we get all the 95 yeses, we know we are absolutely bang on. Perfect. So let me just start with a very simple question. Of course, I'm sure uh, a lot of you may be facing this program problem of procrastination. Is there anyone in the room right now who doesn't have the problem of procrastination, who can Stay with confidence. I'm the one who never procrastinates. So if you can write, I am, then I'll know, okay, fine. We have this person who is absolutely a non procrastinator. Can we have anybody who can say I am? So I'm assuming everybody. Okay, good. <laughs> good Chandar. So that's very important. What you said or what you didn't say, because you are not alone. And this is very important to understand. Everyone, everyone has been a procrastinator or is a procrastinator to some degree. Even the most successful people have been procrastinators. Of course, they are able to overcome their procrastination problems, but having a situation where you will not procrastinate ever will not be there. And that is very important to understand because in some situations, procrastination can be a little helpful also. Okay. And we'll, we'll come to that. We'll come to that. Now, anybody wants to write on the chats that why do we procrastinate? Just one, one words. Why do we procrastinate? Anybody willing to write? Lazy. Perfect. Laziness all the way. <laughs> Fear of failure. Perfect. So let me just complacency. Absolutely. So let me just give you some reasons. It can be lack of time. It can be lack of will to do the work. Like we are in our own world. It can be lack of energy and lack of interest. It can be not finding the right resources because maybe, for example, you want to learn, uh, just taking a very simple example, you want to learn, let's say, how to become the best professional speaker in the world, but in your city, you're not finding the right resources. So that can be one reason. Or it can be you have something else in your mind. Or it can be fear of fail failure. Now, this is where I want you to take just two minutes, okay? Uh, I'm going to give you an exercise after the end of the session also, but just take two minutes and thanks to everyone who is writing on the chat. Now, what I want you to do is write in your own notebook or a piece of paper, three reasons which are personal to you. I don't want to see them. You don't have to show it to everyone, but everyone has their reasons for procrastination. What I want you to do is, Write down just three reasons which you feel are the strongest reasons which make you procrastinate. See, Chandar gave a very strong word in the beginning and which was action. And we will start our action 
on the training right from the word go. So it's not just going to be me who is going to do all the talking. You guys also will do certain amount of work right from now. So what I want you to do is again, just take two minutes, write down three points which are personal to you, which you feel are the reasons you procrastinate. And once you are done, just press Y, Y, Y on the chat window. So I know that yes, most of you have done it. Good, I see a lot of voice coming in. Priorities, time, importance, excellent. Good. So we'll just wait for 15 or 20 more seconds before we go further. Good. So now I'll go further. Okay. Now you guys are absolutely right. When you mention various reasons, and of course there are certain reasons on the screen also, but we need to understand that most of these reasons get converted to one strongest reason, which is all of them become part of your habit. Okay. Now for next five to seven minutes, I want you to listen very carefully because this is going to form the basis of how we procrastinate and why we procrastinate. We are going to use certain amount of neuroscience today, not a detailed one. Don't worry. If you guys are scared of science, we are not going to have a detailed science session, but I am going to tell you what happens in your brain when you procrastinate. And if you understand that well, not only the problems of procrastination, but a lot of other things can be taken care of. Okay. So for next seven minutes or 10 minutes, I want you to listen very carefully. If you're finding it difficult, don't worry. I'll explain it two or three times, but what I'm telling you is going to be very important. Okay. Now understand this one important thing. I'm giving you an example. Let's say, I'm preparing for an exam. I'm going to take a very, very simple example, which we have all gone through that whenever there was an exam, I'm sure a lot of us used to prepare in the last two days. We knew the exam is going to be there in the next 15 days, 30 days, but the preparation always used to be in the last two days. And I'm sure a lot of you can correlate. Now it's very important to understand that why we do that. A lot of times how our mind functions is that it wants to find reasons and justifications for our failure. Okay. Now let's understand if you prepare for 15 days and you don't perform well, you will not be able to justify it to the world. But the biggest of all, you will not be able to justify to yourself. Hey man, I took 15 days and I still performed badly. But let's say you just prepare on the last day or last two days. I mean, everybody prepared for 15 days, but you only prepared for one day. Now, even if you perform average, what can you tell yourself in the whole world? Hey man, I was busy. I didn't have the time. I was maybe not had the right resources. I was busy, but because I prepared for one day, this was the best I could do. And the biggest justification of this, you give to yourself more than anyone in the world. That when you prepare that presentation in the last minute, when you prepare for that interview in the last minute, when you are doing whatever you are doing in the last minute, you have a justification for yourself in case of your failure. So your fear of failure 
makes you do it in the last minute so that you have justifications of your failure. And to understand that, I'm going to explain you parts of brain. We are just going to take two parts, the prefrontal cortex, which is the PFC and the limbic system. Okay. And now this is where I want you to listen very carefully. Prefrontal cortex is the most advanced part of your brain. And I'm just going to give a very, very uh, simple declaration here. Uh, we are not going to go into the details of science. We are using this only for the purpose of explanation of behavior, but we are not using any alternate science science. We are not using any pseudoscience. What I'm talking to you about prefrontal cortex and limbic systems are the parts of real brain. And this is what neuroscientists and doctors study when they study about brain. So neuroscience is the study of central nervous system, which is the brain and the spine. So this is exact science, but yes, we are not going to go into details. So coming back to the prefrontal cortex, that's the most advanced part of your brain. Okay. This is the brain, which makes you take decisions, which is responsible for your impulse control, which makes you take, make a difference between the right and the wrong, which gives you that emotional control which makes you focus on things and makes you plan for the future. Okay. But on the other side, you have limbic system, which is your fight or flight system, which is emotional decision-making, which works for your survival. Now to understand better, I want you to imagine this. Now let's say you are going and suddenly a tiger comes in front of you. Now, what do you think will happen? When you see a tiger at that moment of time, will you start thinking like this? Oh man, this is a tiger. It's a big tiger. Should I run? Should I fight? What should I do? Or you, your brain will take an instant decision to just run away from there. Now type one or two. So that one means you will take all your time. You will think what is happening. You will analyze the situation or the second situation is you will just run man. Absolutely. This is what we say as a stress response. Everybody's typing too, which is what a, every normal person will do because you, and that is where we say your limbic system is in action because that's your survival. But at that point of time, when you are running, your prefrontal cortex will not be functioning because it masks the ability of your prefrontal cortex to work and your emotional brain works. You make a decision, run fast. Your digestion goes for a toss. The only thing is survival. So this is called a fight or flight response. So now again, I'm not going to go into too much details, but a flight to fight response in simple words is where your ability to use prefrontal cortex, which is the right one to take a decision is not functioning and your limbic system, which is your emotional part of the brain is working. Emotional part means High cortisol, and I'll explain why I'm explaining this. High cortisol means higher stress. This is also called a stress response, a physiological stress. Now, of course, this is a situation where the physical tiger is there. You are running very fast. You have a big blood flow. You have your cortisol and your stress levels rising. You have a heartbeat, which is very fast. But in normal lives, we don't meet tigers, right? Of course, we don't meet physical tigers but we do meet imaginary tigers, which is maybe the presentation that you have to give in front of 500 people. Maybe you have to have a chat with your CEO. Maybe you have a client meeting and you are nervous, or maybe you are under a financial stress and you don't know how I'm going to make my EMIs go. So all these are imaginary things, but they are also going to make the physical system give a stress response because our brain doesn't know the difference between a real tiger and an imaginary tiger. Now, before you start thinking, why is this Siddharth talking about stress and uh, 
imaginary tigers and the real tigers we are here to know about procrastination and this is where the <coughs> brain part comes into play as i told you in the beginning that fear of failure okay that fear of failure is your stress response now i'm going to take a break for 2 minutes because i want you all to come into picture right now and this is very important okay i want you to do a serious analysis of this i you have already mentioned or written why you procrastinate okay i want you to go through that again that why you procrastinate most of us will say that we are lazy okay but trust me it's not laziness it's your brain response which is already there it has already become a habit now what i want you to do is take is take 3 minutes and write down what you have lost in life because of procrastination trust me when we do this interview one to one in a coaching session people cry of course we don't want to take a lot of time what i want you to do is just take 3 minutes maybe you procrastinated something which was 2 years back in your personal life in your professional life try and do a honest analysis maybe you lost a promotion maybe your health has deteriorated maybe financially you are not that well off maybe you wanted to learn a skill maybe you wanted to do a personality development whatever it is i want you to write honestly take 3 minutes and write what have you lost and once you have written that no compulsions but if you can share it will be lovely to see what you have lost no compulsions this can be very personal also there is no compulsion to share but if you can do mention that in the chat window trust peace of mind absolutely anybody else who would like to share two precious years may start on a wonderful opportunity stable mind guys thanks for sharing because th this is not easy to share i mean it may look easy but i'm really glad and really thankful that you're sharing because this will give other people a learning what can happen when we procrastinate peace absolutely Anybody else I'll just wait for 15 or 20 more seconds lost great op good opportunities for abroad Hmm lost one flat Qual didn't qualify for the gate profession excellent thanks guys thanks for sharing once again i'm thanking you all <clears throat> i'll i'll so thank thanks for writing in you can keep writing in but but 
whatever you are writing or oh, lost your job that's 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 that that's can be really terrible ah uh, so let me let me just share this okay whatever you are writing today trust me in case you want to need, make a big change as chandra said the word is action we know a lot of things i'm sure you also know procrastination about most of the things about procrastination okay the key word is going to be action so what you are writing right now i'm going to give you a good detailed exercise trust me do that and you will see a sea change in your procrastination habits okay now higher ctc that's that's something really really which could have been wonderful to you so generally what we have seen is that how procrastination creates a havoc for us is it creates a havoc in terms of career health wealth personal development and relationships and you see sometimes procrastination affects us directly but a lot of times we don't realize it affects us indirectly and we don't even realize and the biggest one and the biggest one out of all this five all these five is your health we never associate procrastination with health but most of the people we did a survey and we have studied a lot of studies also and almost every scientist has come to a conclusion that health is something which really suffers because of procrastination of course direct way of affecting health is that you have postponed your will to exercise you wanted to join a gym you haven't done that for 3 years you wanted to start that yoga class you haven't joined you have been committing to yourself that every day i'll wake up at 5 o'clock but you haven't done that of course that's that's a direct impact for health but even if it's not a direct impact of health your other things whether it's your career whether it's your wealth whether it's your personal development whether it's your relationships when you continue to procrastinate the biggest effect is the anxiety levels what people have seen is in studies that people who procrastinate a lot there is a direct link between anxiety depression and procrastination because whatever you are procrastination whether it's whatever you are procrastinating whether it's about your wealth whether it's about your relationships you want that badly you really want that that's why it's there in top of your mind but because of whatever reasons we have mentioned before you haven't been able to do it so that will lead to anxiety it's not rocket science and if you combine with your current knowledge of prefrontal cortex and limbic system the more your limbic system comes into your action the less your prefrontal cortex is and more limbic system means more stress more anxiety and i want you to really remember this and take away from this presentation also that indirectly procrastination really ruins your health and you don't even realize because all your lifestyle diseases come because of procrastination i will leave smoking from tomorrow i will leave drinking or whatever but you never do that because you keep procrastinating leaving your bad habits and adopting your good habits okay with me till now just give me a why so that i know you are on the same page you are absolutely fine because before i go into the thing of telling you how to manage i want you to be crystal clear about all these things good excellent glad to hear that now let's go further okay now <laughs> we are going to go down to the simple mechanism of how to control our procrastination okay and the first and foremost is forgive yourself yes it may sound simple you may feel what what i have to forgive myself for but trust me as i told you in the beginning procrastination is normal procrastination is there in your evolutionary genes 
it was meant for survival so if i mean i i can't uh push it further that whatever has happened will happen i mean you know that you can't change your past but first before starting out before making yourself a person who doesn't procrastinate you have to forgive yourself and forgiving is not going to be easy so let me remind you of an exercise which you have to do in your home okay somebody is wants to draw on the screen and that's fine it's okay i hope that red red uh, coloring doesn't mean anger on my presentation but still okay yes yes amitesh i'm um, embrace and forgive and move on now <coughs> we have done two small exercises today which is why we procrastinate and what have we lost now what i want you to do is and again your test of procrastination is going to be when you do this exercise i want you to sit in a room for 15 minutes just for 15 minutes i want you to sit in that room with a no disturb sign board on the door which means nobody can disturb you for those 15 minutes you have to leave your cell phone out of the room you can't have your cell phone in the room you can't have your laptop in the room you can't have anybody knocking in the room for 15 minutes just with a pen and a paper i want you to think about these two exercises with a absolutely fresh mind that why do you procrastinate and what have you lost i want you to do that honest exercise diligently it can be 15 minutes it can be 30 minutes but not less than 15 minutes and again i said this is going to be an exercise on procrastination because if you don't do it it means you're procrastinating doing this exercise and once you do it trust me you will find what are the benefits of this once you have written what have you lost because of procrastination forgive yourself for those say loud to yourself i forgive myself that i was not able to get that exam passed i forgive myself for not taking that job promotion i forgive myself for not able to buy that second house whatever your loss is you got to forgive yourself because if a closure doesn't happen trust me it's going to interfere in your next exercise also about doing the action yes yes chanda i'm just writing the questions okay fair enough <laughs> carry on so I, yeah yeah fair enough so everyone do that exercise forgive yourself for whatever you have been not able to get that's first thing okay after forgiving yourself accept yourself and these are two different things forgiving yourself is one thing accepting yourself is absolutely different a lot of time we forgive people but we are not able to accept it and i'm sure you will realize in your personal life also sometimes you have been able to forgive people but you are not able to accept them okay so when you do this exercise with yourself first you have to forgive yourself and then you have to accept yourself that's working with your mind the second thing that you have to do is and this is again where neuroscience comes into picture what's your reward <coughs> you see the prefrontal cortex and now let me just give you a little bit of more information about the prefrontal cortex the prefrontal cortex is very smart but it's very small very small means it's very very resource intensive also it gets tired very easily so it doesn't have a lot of energy and a lot of things to waste on anything it conserves energy and only sees the reward okay and that's why uh, i'm sure if anybody who has promised themselves not to have an ice cream for next 3 weeks are not able to do it the moment an ice cream comes in front of them because you know what happens ah oh, you have decided not to have that ice cream but now that ice cream is right in front of you and you're like mm, let me just have that one bite second bite third bite and the ice cream is gone why because that reward of that taste of that delicious ice cream is right in front of you and the punishment 
of having that ice cream which is that weight gain is further away so whatever you want to do okay and this is where the third exercise will come into picture maybe not right now because we are uh, very less on time but i'll just take a minute tell me what are the things and you can just write it on the uh, chat window what are the things that you want to do right now which you know you are procrastinating and you want to bring a closure and you want to do them mention those things right now just one thing which you definitely want to do exercise and being fit shala brights just just write it here don't don't write it on the paper do it later in the day or maybe tomorrow but right now just one or two things on the chat window what you want to do right now which you have been procrastinating start my cardio again travel wake up at 5 am sort of right that's the hard one focus on your fitness morning walk and exercise book reading <clears throat> strict diet so most of it related to health one for travel one for reading books good so so we have an idea okay now now keep restart writing that's a good one gunair satish again writes regular morning exercise so you see <clears throat> meghnath writes travel give time to myself that's a strong one i am daily routine work towards my passion abhishek good one diet again perfect guys so now stop overthinking that's a, that's a strong one you might need my personal uh, coaching classes for that just kidding <laughs> travel me time perfect guys so so now what i want you to think is what will happen i mean what will happen if let's say you start reading again what will happen if you start writing again what will happen if you do that exercise what will happen if you have that diet that reward needs to be in front of you you need to tell yourself that this is the person i'm going to become this is how it's going to help me and it it cannot be in your mind okay it has to be there in writing so what you need to do is your prefrontal cortex every day when when it gets up it needs to see that reward if the reward is not there your mind will go to somewhere else because i said prefrontal cortex is resource limited whatever resources are there in front of it it uses them so this reward it cannot be there in your mind it has to be there in front of you so today when you are sitting for those 30 minutes after that i want you to write your rewards what will you gain when you have that routine followed and i don't want you to write i'll be happy i'll be grateful these are uh, generally very very abstract terms and you won't gain any anything out of it so if you're talking about health then you specifically write i want to be fit enough to maybe walk for 10 kilometers without getting tired or if i read this is how it's going to help me in my personal understanding of relationships whatever that reward is everybody will have their individual re uh, rewards but i want you to write down those rewards they have to be in front of you and that's a big one for prefrontal cortex prefrontal cortex only knows rewards it only works for two reasons one is what's my reward and it doesn't do the second thing to avoid punishment that's the only thing which prefrontal cortex understands reward and punishment reward and punishment this is a big one divide the big into the small so i'll i'll give you a very simple example it just happened 3 uh, days back okay so there was this person who came for personal coaching for me for personality development <clears throat> and in the personality development we do a lot of exercise before we actually uh, go about doing that so what it came out was that he needs to work on his body language he needs to understand reading body language he needs to work on voice articulation he needs to go for voice training he needs to go in for emotional control he needs to go in for stress training and by the end of it he was like man this is too much there are so many things which i have to do you see a lot of time what happens is when we plan about our health when we plan about our travel when we plan about our reading we have grand plans 
and grand plans are scary for the prefrontal cortex. So what we told him is, we are not going to do anything. We are just going to focus for 10 days on your voice, nothing else. 10 days is going to be voice. Then next 10 days only on body language. Then next 10 days only on stress management. And suddenly everything was looking perfectly fine to him because it was in small chunks with a timeline. And this is where I want you to understand a very, very important aspect about procrastination. You see, when you have a deadline from your boss, whether you do it on the first day or the last day, you will eventually do it because it has a deadline. Procrastination will only mean that you're doing it on the last day. But if you see most of the things that you have mentioned above, whether it's playing sports, whether it's exercise, whether it's your uh, reading, whether it's your planning the diet, have no timelines. And when there is no timeline, you will never be near the end of the timeline and you will never start. Trust me, ask people in their thirties and they will regret and they will not even be able to tell you where twenties disappeared. Ask people in their forties, thirties disappeared. They are gone. So the procrastination is not for one day or two days. Sometimes the procrastination goes on for years because there is no deadline and let it sink in. I'm going to say that again, because this is very important to understand. Most of the things that you have mentioned here, please understand they don't have a timeline and a procrastinator knows when you have a deadline, you will do it just one day before the deadline, but you will do it. But these things that you are writing here and most of the things that we want to do in life have no deadlines. And that's why we never start. We become dust before even starting out. And that's why whatever your goal is, divide your goal into small steps. If you are waking up at 7.30, maybe don't go for 5 a.m. Maybe say, I'll start at 7 o'clock for five days, then 6.30 for 15 days, then 5.30 for 15 days. If it's that walk, maybe I'll walk for one kilometer for three days. Maybe then I'll increase the second kilometer. If it's reading, I'll read three pages. And by the way, just for people who are readers, you know, if I ask you, you can, you can you read, read 10 pages, 10 books a year, it's going to be more or less no. But if I tell, tell you 10 pages a day, in all probability, a yes to it. 10 pages a day translates to more than 12 books a year. Small steps taken every day will give you the desired results. Whatever I have read that you guys want, all of them can be done by small steps with timelines. Again, reiterating before going to the next point, prioritize is good. Prioritize in terms of small chunks, daily, small steps, and timeline, timeline, timeline. Without timeline, it's gone. Let's go to the next one. Advertise for yourself. Absolutely, Abdul. A little progress every day sums up to a big result. <clears throat> now, this is a little tricky. You guys need to understand what I mean by advertise for yourself. Now, uh, advertising, uh, uh, just, just write one if you feel you get affected by advertising. Write one. If you feel advertising affects you. And write two, if you feel it affects everyone. And you can write one and two also. Two means it affects a lot of people. One means it affects you. One and two means it affects everybody and you.
perfect so let me give you an insight about advertising okay most of the people don't like to believe that advertising affects them but they definitely feel it affects everybody in the room okay and that's fine and that's the that's the nature of advertising millions of dollars are spent to make you do things which you'll never do now imagine a thing just just imagine this okay let's say i offer you a glass of water and i say you know what in this water i'm going to mix five chemicals i'm going to add 20 spoons of sugar i'm going to add a black color to it and offer you in all probability you will not drink it but when advertising companies brand it with a coke and a pepsi and a thumbs up label you will drink it and that's the power of advertising it will make you eat something which is highly processed absolutely fried which you cannot even call food but you will eat it because that's your limbic system working and advertising works for your limbic system yes yes abdul agreed so what happens is we need to advertise for ourselves and how will we do it i mean how will we advertise for ourselves and that's very simple see first of all remember that you have to eat food every day you have to take a bath every day all there are a lot of things which you do every day for your cleanliness and your health and that's why whether it's any kind of inspiration whether it's kind of any motivation that also needs to be done every day so if you want to be you if you want to up your game you need to advertise for yourself which will mean that whatever you want to do it has to be in front of you and forget about the uh, let's say the beauty of your room when you are writing the three or four things that you want in life which you may want to make sure that you never want to procrastinate ever i want you to write that in bold letters on a piece of paper and have that in front of you every day so when you get up that's the four things that you see when you go and brush your teeth that needs to be there maybe your password is going to be linked to that maybe when you open your laptop screen it needs to remind you because if you surround yourself with the things that you want to do your mind will tell you this is my priority and that's what we were discussing right priority if people can make you drink coke and have a burger and have a pizza which has zero nutrition value is absolutely junk trust me there is a form of positive advertising which can work for you and it's going to be different for different people but you can advertise in terms of paper the second way of doing it is which is a very strong way but it does wonders okay and that is have a buddy let a buddy advertise for yourself which means let's say choose maybe it can be one buddy it can be a couple of uh, different buddies also which remind you of your goal every third or fourth day and you remind him of his goal every third or fourth day and it is going to be a 15 second call just that hey abdul were you able to do it or not hey anil done or not simple no coach no exercise nothing just a 15 second call where the person will ask you these were the three things you were supposed to do whether they are done or not this is advertising for yourself there are n number of other ways maybe i can send you a write up uh, on that also but if you become a champion of advertising for yourself it can be a real game changer a real game changer next thing remove all distractions now again everybody knows this but if you do it with a deadline it's a different ball game so for example let's say take that example of that reading okay now do you, always remember one thing if it's there in your kitchen it's there in your stomach it's a very simple rule if it's there in your kitchen it will find a way to get into your stomach that's why it's in your kitchen 
so when you have when you are giving yourself the time of writing you have to keep your phone in a separate room and a switched off phone maybe find yourself where nobody can disturb you if the phone is in front of you you will open your whatsapp you will open your facebook because the kind of love which facebook can give you the kind of love which whatsapp can give you the kind of dopamine release which you get when you have your likes and people are saying wow what a comment that brings a different pleasure to you and your mind is seeking those pleasures are people liking my post or not are they what are they saying i was having a discussion on nurse vishan singh what's happening there is kangana saying anything else or not there are so many distractions which are absolutely worthless for your life you don't need to know any of these things and if you need to know give yourself 10 minutes in a day that's good enough trust me most of the people you are worrying about in your news channels they don't care to hoots for you they don't even know that you exist in this world why do you give them so much importance is beyond me this is your life it's called taking your life back remove all these distraction and it's not difficult you can do that i'm not saying go not go for entertainment yes watch movies go for entertainment but don't go in for the garbage which is there and most of that is like that i'm sorry to use a strong word but most of the social media is that and it takes away your time you wanted to read you wanted to do something else suddenly you see a pop up coming up about that news and then you are wondering what happened and suddenly you are watching 10 ways of cooking rajma chawal and that's it and then your time is gone and you are never going to cook also so remove distractions means remove them physically and see how it affects you and of course when you are removing distractions time yourself so when you're reading give yourself just 20 to 25 minutes not more than that give yourself 25 minutes take a 5 minute break break do whatever you want to do if you want to check that whatsapp do that come back again but time yourself have an alarm clock so you know in 25 minutes it's done and that's a beautiful way of stopping yourself from uh, not doing things that you not don't want to do and this is the last one which is a very different one but again we started with that your prefrontal cortex that is something which you wanted to do that is something which i told you is responsible for the right decision making prefrontal cortex is the brain which makes you do the right things so how to actually work on your prefrontal cortex and any guesses and i want you to write on the chat window any guesses how you can work in your prefrontal cortex the answers from me are going to surprise you but still i just wanted to take a wild guess how do you think you can work on your prefrontal cortex how you can make it stronger <clears throat> anybody any guesses meditation shall i write hmm anybody else cultivation that's a good one sananjan with positive belief <clears throat> affirmations concentration practice ignorance practice good so practice is definitely uh, a very strong one long time goals stop uh, to self talking confidence perfect very good i'm going to give you very simple that's a good one abdul just make a reward visible by writing it on a piece of paper yes that's what i said write it on the piece of paper very good <clears throat> sleep good one gunair that is one of my thing that i'm going to say so i am going to give you very boring answers for making your prefrontal cortex strong and you're going to be like said seriously is this going to make our prefrontal cortex strong and the answer is a big yes they are very boring answers but they are very strong answers sometimes truth is boring the first one is exercise yes a strong prefrontal cortex which is right there in front of you here 
right in uh, behind your forehead works exceptionally well when it's given 3 hours of exercise in a week the kind of neurotransmitters and hormones which get released the endorphins which gets which gets released the dopamine which gets released are very strong so your first answer to make your prefrontal cortex stronger is exercise and uh, i mean uh, if you want i'm going to make a video also out of it in next 3 weeks watch that video but exercise is the number one way of working on your prefrontal cortex the second one so many of you have written yoga pranayam meditation yes the old boring meditation is the answer to work on your uh, prefrontal cortex so there's a concept called neuroplasticity neuroplasticity means anybody at any age can change the synapses which are there in your brain and the number one way of working on your synapses and making new neurons is meditation but but meditation is not just what we know of yes if you can sit quietly for 10 minutes without any thoughts good you can go for that also but meditation has different flavors if you if you are a singer and you can get lost in your singing is also meditation if you are dancing and you can get lost in your dancing this is also meditation so there are various forms of meditation but yes meditation yoga and pranayam are strong ways of working on your prefrontal cortex the third one which somebody mentioned on the chat window is also again it's boring layman but i mean i cannot define the importance of it and is your sleep 7 to 8 hours of good sleep 8 hours in the bed doesn't mean sleep and there is a golden rule okay that and there's a follow that golden rule in your bed bed should be used only for sex and sleep that's it no phones no tv make that golden rule for your bed and have those 7 to 8 hours of sleep because when you are sleeping that's where your prefrontal cortex your memory cells so there's a, a component called hippocampus it strengthens your memory so whatever you are learning the main learning gets strengthened and the hard wiring you must have heard the term hard wiring almost everybody uses these terms but the hard wiring is done when you are sleeping okay so exercise meditation sleep are the three old boring methods but nothing is more stronger than these three i am going to add one fourth which is very powerful which is right food yes right food now definition of right food can be, i mean i'm not saying vegetarian non vegetarian no right food right food means don't eat out of a packet eat less of sugar eat less of salt eat less of refined and uh, uh, fried foods generally eat less mostly plants and you are good and people and there have been a lot of studies which has been done in fact the happiest person who was in the world was declared he was a monk who was there in himalayas okay and most of the things which came out was right exercise right sleep right meditation and right food if you can develop these four things there are going to be a lot of extra benefits so we are of course talking about a stronger prefrontal cortex for not procrastinating but our body is not just one thing or is not just made for one thing a stronger prefrontal cortex means a stronger will to do other things a stronger prefrontal cortex means you are going to be a better leader stronger prefrontal cortex means you will be able to think more logically stronger prefrontal cortex means in generally you will tend to do the right things 
So not only it's going to help you reduce reduce your procrastination, but it's going to be a absolute different game overall in your uh, manage ma managing the life thing. Okay. So sleep, exercise, meditation, and right food for your prefrontal cortex. And we have already discussed what we have done <coughs> for your uh, procrastination, which is I'm going to revise again. Forgive yourself, accept yourself, write down what's your reward, divide the big into the small, advertise for yourself, remove all distractions, time yourself, and work on your prefrontal cortex. Trust me, try this for 15, 20 days, and you will be writing a mail to me. Wonderful work, Siddharth. We have been able to manage our procrastination. And if it doesn't work, you can use all the swear words for me. <laughs> and that brings us to the end of uh, how to stop procrastinating. I'm open to all your questions now. Yeah, thank you, Siddharth. Thank you so much. That was really wonderful. So guys, we are open for the questions now. So you can uh, type your questions in the chat box and we'll take them one by one. You write here, no? Okay, uh, Siddharth, we already have a first question with us. The question is, if there is only one change I need to make, what will that be? Hmm. So if, I mean, if, if, if let's say you need to make one change, okay, then I will say start advertising for yourself because that is not only going to help you in uh, working on your procrastination, but whatever goals you have in life, you can achieve them if you start advertising for yourself. Because advertising is the only thing which has changed the world's food habits, wearing habits, fashion habits, everything. It's powerful, but we don't use it for ourselves. So if you can incorporate that advertising for yourself, and I said, I am going to write a full uh, article on that. I can share with everyone, everyone how to actually do their advertising for yourself. Just do that and see a sea change in your lifestyle. Thank you. Okay, now we have a second question from Mr. Abdul. Mm -hmm. He's asking, can love for cricket help in managing PFC both physically and mentally? Uh, yes and no. Okay. So yes, if you are playing cricket, which means, which doesn't mean that you're playing for a national team. Even if you go down in your building and you are playing with the kids, it can definitely help you in working on your PFC, both physically and mentally. But if you are watching cricket and only watching, so there are two ways. One is watching cricket and following up on a lot of statistics and everything. Okay. That also helps you in your prefrontal cortex because this is something which you love. So if you are not going overboard with this, then definitely it can help you in working on that. But if your love for cricket is making you watch eight hours of cricket almost on daily basis, then you are outsourcing your emotions to everybody. And this is my favorite example. Let's say your favorite player is Virat Kohli or uh, Bob, uh, so let's take from Abdul. Abdul, what's your, who's your favorite player? Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll just go with the example of uh, Virat Kohli right now. So what happens is when Virat Kohli gets out, we feel bad. Okay. When Virat Kohli makes a century and our team wins, then we celebrate. Okay. It can be Rohit Sharma also. So when Rohit Sharma makes a century for Mumbai Indians, we are like, wow. 
and when he gets out we feel bad now think about it when rohit sharma makes a century he gets the man of the match award he gets all the money he is in the limelight and we are getting happy and rohit sharma doesn't even know that we exist so we have outsourced our happiness and sadness to someone who doesn't even know that i exist in this world so little bit of exercise little bit of following cricket is very good if you follow that passionately also very good but if you are going to watch so much of cricket that it's going to come in between you and your other priorities for example you wanted to do personal development or you wanted to work on a project then it's going to take away your time and it's going to be making a loss for you so you have to balance out that's very important thanks siddharth now <coughs> we have second question from rahul singh he's asking is it important to postpone things for later to have more focus absolutely that's a wonderful question of course uh, we don't have time uh, because this is a full study of what makes us focus on things okay so there are two personalities some personalities want more time but some personalities want less time to get that focus on so rohit uh, rahul are you in sales or anything i mean what kind of uh, he's in hr he's in hr okay fine so you should know that a lot of sales guys fall in that category okay and that's why if you see most of the quarterly numbers are done during the end of the quarter most of the yearly numbers most of people have the strong q4 q4 because of sales people because we are able to focus in the last minute but again there's a there's a full science behind it what motivates us what makes us focus what is enjoyable but yes some people definitely get motivated when they have limited time and these people even if you give them a task 20 days before they will not do it they will only do it in last two days and most of these people tend to be strong sales guys our next question is from mr ravindra kamat yes he is asking how to <coughs> avoid others <coughs> in procrastination yes this needs to be done in two ways first you need to tell yourself who is this other person okay now if the other person is very close to you then if he is, he or she is interfering and if you don't allow their interference that may mean that it may spoil your relationship okay that's one way of looking at it the other way is have you defined your goal most of the time why we allow an influence of the other person in our lives is that we haven't defined our goal for ourselves we haven't told our goal to the other person the other person doesn't even know our goal and that's why it they keep on interfering so first we need to define the goal for ourselves second we need to make sure that the goal is known to the other person and then you don't have to feel happy by making others happy and this there's a balance which needs to be done a lot of people feel happy when they make others happy and if that helps you then in all probability you will do a lot of procrastination for your things but if you have a conversation which you are not scared of most of the people procrastinate the conversation itself and that's why things keep on getting procrastination have a conversation change the conversation with the person who's influencing you tell him about your goal and things are going to be different thanks a lot that was really wonderful <laughs> our next question is from mr ank datta his question is every time he plans uh, the things his plans got disturbed because of various reasons hmm. so how to stick to a long term yes <clears throat> so first uh, this see again this is a very generalized question okay it happens with a lot of people that we plan the whole session is all about this that we plan things and they don't happen so for this again you have to go step by step first do the exercise that i've asked you to do what is a specific thing which you feel is stopping you because for example it's easy to say uh, i am not eating good food that's that's one way of saying it okay now the other way is when i do a due diligence i realize every time i go to the shopping mall i get fried food i get chips i get biscuits 
so i know this is one strong reason second reason whenever i go to somebody's house not happening these days but generally saying whenever you go to somebody's house whenever they offer you things you feel bad in saying no this is going into specifics so till the time we go into specifics we will always ask very generalized thing and that because we haven't gone into the details and that's why the exercise that i've given why we procrastinate spend 15 minutes on that what is that i want to achieve work on that so once we have those absolute pointers these are the things i want these are things which are stopping me there of course uh, uh, there are two ways of doing it one we can have a session and work with him not saying monetarily generally work with him but otherwise also once you have those listed things are going to be visible to you right now they are not visible because in the question itself it's a generalized question thank you uh, now next question we have from mr <coughs> rama he is asking how to control our mental emotions and mainly depression uh that's a full day session <laughs> so uh, honestly this is this is this is the most uh, this is my uh, uh, signature program i work on stress if you remember the beginning when i told you about the limbic system your limbic system is the one first we need to understand emotions are not what we really understand okay emotions are also coming out of our brain and there are there is a physical aspect and there is a mental aspect okay but both the aspects are residing in our brain only okay again for stress there are two ways of doing it one i've already told you how to make us prefrontal cortex stronger higher prefrontal cortex stronger prefrontal cortex generally translates into less of stress okay again i'm giving a very generalized answer because everybody has different stress levels for different reasons but stronger prefrontal cortex so in our brain what happens is when the prefrontal cortex rises then the cortisol which is associated with stress is comes down there are two other ways of bringing down cortisol uh, if you guys have seen munna bhai mbbs the biggest take away from that movie was what jadoo ki jhappi now of course jadoo ki jhappi doesn't solve problems but a good hug with a loved one reduces cortisol because when you hug someone there is a love hormone called oxytocin okay oxytocin is released maximum when a mother is nursing a child but it's also released when any one person which you really love hugs you and it only gets effect come into effect when you hug for more than 7 seconds okay if if anybody drinks cow's milk or buffalo's milk also the injections which they get are oxytocin injections only because they are giving a feeling that somebody that I, that my, that my uh, calf is actually taking my milk but it's the milkman which is doing that but the the function is the same so it's a real hormone which is there but it's also released in humans when you hug someone or when you talk a lot with your loved ones so if your loved one is not near you if your family is outside talk to them on phone then also oxytocin is released one of the biggest ways to bust the stress stress and another thing which i'm personally doing a research on and somebody asked the question on that also is the music give yourself half an hour of music whether you want to play some instrument or you want to listen but when you are listening to the music you will not do anything else you will only listen to the music that seen one of the biggest stress busters there is no uh, confirmed research on that but as i said i'm personally working on that research with a neuroscientist in uh, europe and uh, she is one of the biggest proponents of music for covering your stress levels so apart from the prefrontal cortex that we did the exercise the right sleep the right food the right meditation hugs and music can do wonders thank you thank you siddharth <coughs> yeah okay now i'll take last two questions only because there are too many questions coming uh, <laughs> now mm. one important uh, question from mr dhananjay sena he is asking more tips on digital detoxification <laughs> yeah that's the latest trend okay um you see it's like it's like alcohol 
okay if you are addicted to alcohol it's bad for you but if you take it in limited quantities it can do wonders for you okay similarly digital needs to be seen like that it doesn't have to be your enemy it can be your greatest friend but only when you are in control for example digital can do wonders for your learning for example uh, today i am learning how to play a piano through digital my piano teacher is in bangalore and he's teaching me so i'm using the function of digital i'm there on the laptop but after 45 minutes of that class i don't touch my screen for next two hours okay so again uh, so there are two ways of doing that one is making a timetable for yourself which means the the best way is uh, what i said about the bed only sleep and sex which means your phone cannot be in your bedroom it means when you enter your bedroom you have to leave that in your living room or in your some other room so now you will even if you have the urge it's going to be difficult for you to get up from your bed go to the other room check your whatsapp okay but if it's there in your bedroom you will do it like i said if it's in your kitchen it's in your stomach so the first thing is it doesn't have to be in your bedroom which means in the night you will not use it even in the way you get up in the morning you will not use it because it's not there second time yourself give yourself time that yes 30 minutes 45 minutes whatever that is 15 minutes in the morning 15 minutes in the afternoon 15 minutes in the evening put your notifications off so you don't have to put your notifications on everything can wait i will only read in my time another way is i if you are part of 20 whatsapp groups make sure that you are part of only 3 most of them are crappy jokes only anyways or stupid discussions about politics and religion but the most important thing is which i'm coming in the end is what's your goal why do you want that time see if you want to detoxify it means you're losing your time but if you have free time what will you do with that right now that is that in front of you and that's why goal setting that's why any training that we normally do is with goal setting what's your goal in life agar detoxification kar bhi liya uh, uh, sorry to come to hindi the other players also in the room but if let's say you detoxify and you have time what will you do with your time if that's in front of you that yes if i have that half an hour i can practice my piano if i have that half an hour i can work on my writing if i have that half an hour i can do my reading if that is in front of you detoxification is going to be very simple so the first step of all this is what is my goal in life what i want to do with that free time once that is in front of me erotize in front of me in the morning i when i get up i read that answer is clear thank you very much was i too loud that you had to remove your hair no 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 <laughs> just kidding <laughs> so uh one last question uh, yes. so this question is from <clears throat> she is basically asking two questions <clears throat> you think culture affects procrastination 100% 100%, 100%. and how can we lead or manage procrastinating children is it different from adult adults absolutely different absolutely different <clears throat> that's my favorite subject again first <clears throat> procrastination is different in different cultures it's at national level also it's at city level also and it's at society level also it's your at your friends level also okay let's say in your organization if after the lunch break you have 10 smokers okay and your area is non smoking area now if you are the only smoker you will think twice who will go out for it it happens in one of the biggest campuses in mumbai godrej campus okay so inside smoking is not allowed you have to walk at least 2 kilometers so there was this friend of mine who didn't smoke for 3 months because he thought who will walk 2 kilometers alone and then come back but then five guys because he was hiring a team it was a bpo five team members all were smokers that's it 
the smoking started again they formed a group so i'm just giving you a simple example of how team members affect others reaction now there were six people going for a stroll they were chatting away different thing they had all the reasons to go and smoke similarly it affects a city level also if you see and personally i am from delhi only but i and chander ji is in delhi but and i've lived in mumbai now for the last 15 years i can tell you people in delhi procrastinate a lot more than in mumbai <laughs> chander ji is looking at me with his eyes so but that's a fact that's my personal experience matlab delhi is ho jayega things will happen mumbai thing has to happen right now and i mean all my life i've been delhi last 15 years in mumbai but that's a cultural difference which exists now of course that doesn't mean 100% of the population is like that for example chander ji i know he is on the spot when you ask within a minute he does things so of course it's not generalized to the 100% extent but yes a majority of people behave in a certain way it can be at the country level also and that's why some countries progress much more than individual countries coming back to children it's very important to understand the prefrontal cortex that we spoke about is not fully developed in a child till the age of 24 huh? that's why it said teenage love is the most dangerous love the girl or the guy you like at the age of 15 you will regret being with him or her at 25 but if your love is 3 or 4 years old you will not know the difference because it will become part of you okay coming back to why it's different is the prefrontal cortex when it's not developed it means your ability to think analytically doesn't exist fully but your emotional brain is fully developed so if you are getting angry at 7 year old for not behaving properly it's our fault because that 7 year old doesn't have the prefrontal cortex to understand what's right and what's wrong it's still developing and that's why the approach of managing procrastination or anything in children is very different so till age of 10 it has a different way of functioning 10 to 19 it has a different way of functioning because prefrontal cortex develops in a different way from 10 to 19 and then from 19 to 24 different and then 24 you are fully developed so whole different way of the reward is far more stronger with children punishment also is far more different from children so there's a concept of uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, personal choice if you use an example of personal choice children work in a different just just one example i'll give it's also called autonomy when i have to make my child sleep at 10 o'clock in the night if i tell him it's time 10 o'clock are you coming to the bed it's very difficult but when i tell him do you want to listen to a song or a story then he has a choice and he chooses a story my major work is done 10 o'clock he is in the bed but he thinks he has made a choice of listening to a story this is how you work with children you give them options which makes your larger goal met but it doesn't matter to you whether you tell a story or a song but they know they have made a choice so when they have a choice they feel empowered which is a different thing that's also true for a lot of adults but manage manageability is different in adults and children thank you sindarth so now uh, i would <laughs> request rahul to unmute all the participants and we, we can take one last question one last question from the audience directly with mr sadar one last question can you unmute everyone yeah so uh, people will have to choose unmute to you know unmute themselves now technology has unmuted everybody but if uh, someone would like to ask some question we are happy to take one more question but there are some questions already in the chat box i can see and we'll make sure we'll send them to siddharth and he can take his time to kind of answer those so uh, that is de definitely happening in the absence of uh, any question now amitesh probably you can summarize or we can probably 
So no questions. No one would uh, would like to ask any question. Okay, great. So thank you, everyone. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for uh, uh, making this uh, session successful. I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Mr. Siddharth first of all. It was really a wonderful session. There are certain eye openers for me as well. Uh, certain learnings for this. So this this 24 years uh, age, even I was also not aware. So it was a different theory for me. Anyways, it was a great learning for me as well. Uh, so it, it was really, really wonderful to have you uh, here, Mr. Siddharth with us. Uh, and the session was really enlightening. Uh, and uh, uh, I would like to uh, thank you on the behalf of the entire team. Thank you so much for coming and uh, sharing the knowledge with us. Yes, Sandarji. Yeah. So uh, thank you. And, and as very rightly said, Amitesh, uh, this was, I think, a very powerful, very, very powerful session. Uh, on the lighter note, I think I have to now go to my kitchen and look at a lot of things which need to go out of my kitchen because if they are visible, they'll go into my stomach. But on a serious note, uh, I just managed to type some things on the chat and they're just very basically saying that if you want to stop, and that's my learning, by the way, stop procrastinating if you want to. I mean, rebuild, redesign, repurpose, reimagine, re-engineer your life and yourself, you need to stop procrastinating now. And that's, I think, a, a lot of tools discussed in such a short time, lots of uh, very practical things uh, in such a short time. And oh my God, there's so many learnings. And I was taking my notes. And as a habit, so that we kind of, you know, uh, capsule these notes into some little five, six pages of a document. And uh, I'll definitely share it with you before we send out to all our participants. But this indeed, I think, was one of the very powerful session in a long time. And I think this has really opened eyes. And as uh, Amitesh rightly said, it has opened eyes uh, and naturally awareness to a lot of things we knew. But today, there is a scientific reason to it. Today, there's a very neuro reason to it. And today, of course, the way you really debriefed everything is so, so powerful. So thank you very much, Siddharth, for this. And I think for a long time, we'll remember these lessons. And probably for all of us, the work starts today. And on a parting note, Siddharth, is there one very important message which you'd like to leave with this entire family uh, of Trevatron, which is globally based? And we are working against time. And by the way, I keep saying because a lot of people uh, on the forum today have been working continuously for the last six months, nonstop. So any, any specific message for this entire team or the entire family of Trevatron from you? Yes, I mean, uh, I think we can summarize everything in very simple words. Eat well, sleep well, play well. If you can do that, Life is going to be very simple, very easy, no problems. Fantastic. That was very well said. And thank you so much, Adad, once again. And thank you, everyone, uh, on being on this uh, particular show today. This was our session number three. I cannot thank enough uh, Ms. Chandra for allowing us and backing us up so well. And it is all because of her inspiration and encouragement that we are able to achieve so much in the entire uh, human resource segment in the entire LND. So thank you, Ms. Chandra, if you're listening. And please, all of you, have a great weekend. Spend good time with your family. And these are some very powerful things you can actually just now go back and tell your family and spend time with them and tell them what wonderful things you've learned. So thank you, Siddharth, once again. And thank you, Mitesh. And I think it's time for us to sign off. And thanks for such a wonderful session. Great memories and great learnings. Thank you so much. Thank thanks, you. everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye, everybody. And thank you so much. Time to log out.